Okay guys, another video here just about intravenous fluids. We'll be having a number of talks throughout the year on intravenous fluids, what to use and when. But I thought I'd give you a little insight as to the types of fluids that we have available in the hospital and a little bit about the giving sets that we have as well. So I'm going to start with the giving sets over here. This is a normal, regular giving set where we use the spike up the top here to spike the bag run the fluids through using this. So this is open at the top and this is closed that compresses the tube. So open and close, run the air all the way out by running fluid through uh, and make sure there's some fluid in your little well here. So that's a very simple giving set where you spike your fluid, fill the well and let it run through. Um, then we have these, these are blood giving sets. So the difference between these is that yeah, you spike the bag. And we usually use these for bloods and blood products most of the time as in we use them for other things, but we always use them for blood. So you spike the bag of blood and it flows into these two chambers. So there's two chambers here and the purpose of this is to take out any debris and any air. So if you look at this chamber here, it has a little sort of filter, if you can see that, um, built into it there. So that catches any debris in it and any bubbles tend to gather here and burst around the, uh, the outside of the material. So down into this chamber, there are far, far fewer bubbles. So hopefully very few bubbles or none, but it also has additionally has this ball here that helps again, burst bubbles. So that all that flows down into the actual tubing itself is blood with no bubbles in it. Closes by the same mechanism. Having the little roller ball up is open. So the tube isn't compressed and then rolling it all the way down to the bottom, closes it by compressing the tubing over this little white roller ball. So that's a blood giving set. You might see those being used in theatres and it's what you use if you're giving any blood products, particularly red cell concentrate on the wards. This is what we call an octopus. So this is three little lumens, three little devices, and it attaches either directly onto a cannula that you've placed in a patient. So either directly onto it without a bung or you can place a bung on the cannula itself and then this can connect to it. So any drugs that can be mixed can go through the same cannula. So a lot of the antibiotics and fluids you would end up giving can all be mixed through the same cannula with no particular issues. If you're unclear as to what can and cannot be mixed together, you can check uptodate.com. The hospital has a subscription to that all throughout the HSC West. And um, I will put together maybe a few uh, words on how to put that, um, how to get access to that or how to get free access to it on your phone. It's very helpful. You can search up any drug and down at the bottom of the description of that drug, it has a compatibility section. So you can always tell what drugs can and cannot be mixed together. Most of them can, but just for checking. Now moving on to IV fluids. So fluids can be largely divided up into crystalloids and colloids. So we're gonna talk about all the crystalloids first. And then finally, we'll talk about jello fusion, which is the one real colloid I have here. So firstly, I have compound sodium lactate or Hartman solution, as you will hear it commonly called. Something common about all these bags and packages is that they have on them, obviously their name, their volume, and their contents. So on all these bags here, it'll tell you their pH, their osmolarity, and their contents both in grams and uh, in millimoles per litre. So you'll have everything you need to know on that as to what you're giving. I'll go into the contents of them more when we do a little PowerPoint presentation, but this is just to show you what's on the bag. It has a rough guesstimate of how much fluid has drained out of your bag along the side here. Obviously, if you this tells you it's isotonic all the way down here and then finally whenever you're hanging a bag of fluids we always check the date the expiry date and this expires September 2022 so this bag of Hartman solution would be perfectly good to use and then these are all I haven't opened these but just to show you the two parts down the bottom so this part on the left here you can put a syringe through that so when we add for example, diphene to our bags for analgesia when our patients are in theatre, we put our diphene in our syringe. So we draw it up in our syringe to know how much we're giving. And then we put a needle through this and inject it into the bag. This device on the side is where we spike the fluid to put our giving set on it. So this little tab here clicks off and you're left with this here and your spike goes up and through that all the way in to drain the fluid out. So that's a one litre bag of Hartman's. 
this is just a smaller bag so a 500 ml bag of paraffin so that's all we usually have of paraffin solution because um, if we're giving drugs we tend to give them in saline or in dextrose so there's a, a one litre and a half litre bag of paraffin these are all normal saline so that's a litre half a litre 250 bags 100 mils and 50 mils these are usually for giving fluid or uh, giving drugs so we often use them to mix up drugs again just like our hartman's bag we have the contents on it here isotonic sodium chloride 0.9 percent one liter ph of 5.5 osmolarity 308 and exactly what's in it in grams so and then what's in it in millimoles per liter of sodium and of chloride so it's isotonic but as you can see the amount of sodium and chloride is super normal so much higher than we would normally get in our um, in our own blood sodium being usually up to 145 and chloride is usually below 109 so we'll talk more about that when we uh, do our little powerpoint and our little lecture moving on to the glucose solutions you can get glucose five percent ten percent twenty percent and fifty percent so again, lots of different volumes for giving drugs. Usually the 5% is what we use if we're diluting a drug in them. You'll see in ICU they give most of their drugs in sodium chloride, or in glucose, excuse me, because they don't want to give too much sodium or chloride when they are giving, um, if they were giving saline. So that's a 250 ml bag, 5% glucose contents there. pH is quite low, so quite acid, acidic, 4.2 and it has 12.5 grams of glucose in this entire bag of 250 mils, which is not much. So this is why we don't use 5% glucose if we need to replace someone's, um, if someone's hypoglycemic, we use higher concentrations of glucose. So it's also available here in 100 ml bags, in 50 ml bags, and this is just a different type of container. So this is still a 500 ml, 5% glucose, still has the same information on it except it actually has the calorie content there and apart from that it's the same as your 500 ml bag expiry date 2022 these obviously hang upside down and that's why these numbers to tell you exactly how much has gone out of the bottle as you're uh, draining it out for these bottles or these types of bottles you pull off one of those foils and you spike the hole that's underneath and the other hole you can use, these bottles don't drain as easily as your bags, which are just a softer plastic. This is a harder plastic. So if you have a drug that's in a bottle similar to this and it's not draining, chances are it's just that it's the pressure has increased in it. So what you do is if you've spiked this hole here, you stick a nice wide bore needle in through this side. It lets air into your bottle and allows all your fluid to drain down through your giving set. So to 5% glucose. I couldn't find any 10% glucose, but here's 20%. So 20% glucose. These bags are starting to look a little bit different. They're just made by different companies and they're made of slightly different material. This one's a bit softer. This is a 500 ml bag of 20% glucose. These are now into hypertonic solutions. Hypertonic. You can see that our 5% glucose is isotonic with an osmolarity that's pretty close to what the osmolarity of our blood is. And now we're looking at 20%, so we've gotten considerably higher, and we are now hypertonic. Um, it gives all the same information, just in slightly different places on it. Again, it's giving us uh, how many grams of glucose. So each 500 ml contains 100 grams of glucose, which is considerably higher, of course, than our 5% solution. And how many calories expired? Very 2021. Pretty much the same down the bottom. Give drugs through this one. Tear this little tab off and spike this side. This is the same again, but in 100 ml. So we can use the 20% glucose for replacing or giving sugar to someone who is uh, hypoglycemic. We'd use this rather than the 5% because we'd have to give a much larger volume of the 5%. You should note that people call this dextrose. Glucose and dextrose are somewhat interchangeable. If you know your chemistry, you'll know the difference between dextro and levo. So it is a D-glucose, but we refer to it as glucose that's what it's officially referred as so if you hear someone talking about dextrose it's glucose that they um, are talking about it's an interchangeable thing and then finally we have g50 50 percent glucose weight per volume in a glass bottle this is extremely irritant to the veins so we've gone from an isotonic to a hypertonic solution and this is extremely 
hypertonic. So if we look down here, look at our osmolarity there, 2,770 milliosmoles per liter. When you consider that our um, normal osmolarity is below 300. So extremely irritant to the veins and we have to be careful about where we give it. So 50 mils of this solution contains 25 um, grams of glucose. So it's a smaller volume than the other bottles. The reason you will see these being used on the wards is that we use them to treat hyperkalemia. Um, so if your patient's potassium is quite high, we put insulin, so 10 to 15 units of insulin into this bottle. So we flip the cap off with a little rubber bung underneath and we use an insulin syringe, not a one mil syringe, an insulin syringe to measure out 10 to 15 units. Check with the nurse because the nurses are far more used to measuring out insulin than we are, but certainly always check with another person because insulin is dangerous and can kill. And then it's injected into this. We then hang it upside down by the patient and you spike the bottle. Just like I mentioned earlier, because this is a glass bottle, this is uh, can be difficult to drain. So beside where you've spiked the um, the rubber bung down here, you'll usually need to take a nice big needle, at least a green one, if not a white one. So a good wide bow needle and stick it into the rubber bung beside. This allows air to be drained into the bottle so that the fluid can drain out via the giving set. So it stops it pulling a vacuum. If you need to hang it off a drip stand, what I do is I put a little tape from one side over to the other in a little loop and you can hang it up on your drip stand like that. So that's your glucose 50%, which you may end up using to treat hyperkalemias. You can see the pH here, 3.5 to 5.5, and it's in water. So that's our glucose solutions. I have put out plasmalite and mentalite here because these are two other um, solutions that sometimes you might see about the hospital, certainly up in uh, ICU or maybe just in some other hospital. So we'll talk about plasma lines first. It's another crystalloid, an isotonic crystalloid. This is a litre. It's pH 7.4, so quite physiological. Its contents are a little bit different to the previous, um, uh, previous crystalloids that we mentioned. And if you look at the contents of sodium chloride and potassium chloride, it has magnesium, it has some sodium acetate, which we will discuss during our lecture. And it tells you again, all your millimoles here. If you look at your chloride there, chloride 98, far more physiological, a little bit lower actually than we would um, have in our blood. And sodium, physiological at 140, same with potassium, magnesium, and we'll talk about the acetate later on. You probably won't end up using this on the wards, you won't see it very often, but just in case you happen to be up around the ICU, plasma light is just another uh, isotonic solution that we have. And again, expiration date. Same for mentalite. Mentalite is used for maintenance. It's a, it's a um, hypotonic solution. It's a litre of it here. I'll just show you the contents here and the contents in uh, millimoles per litre. So the chloride is quite low in this, so we regularly use it in, in patients up in ICU that we run on maintenance fluids, which is not something we commonly do up in ICU. We tend to bolus a bit more than, than give maintenance, but that's the contents and that's what mentalite is, if you ever hear those mentioned and uh, details to follow in our little tutorial. Now, jello, jello fusion. So this is a colloid solution. And that means that it doesn't just contain electrolytes. So I'll take my hand out so you can see that a bit better. This contains modified liquid gelatin. So it is a gelatin containing solution. And it tells you the contents of everything else in it there. Sodium chloride, magnesium chloride, potassium chloride. But this is mainly given because it contains gelatin. Gelatin uh, functions as a large oncotic protein that stays within the blood vessels for a certain period of time. And holds fluid in the blood vessels that little bit longer. It's thought now in research to not actually be that long or long enough to maybe not make that much of a difference between a crystalloid and a colloid. But there we go, that's jello that you might see given on the wards. We don't give it too often around here, but occasionally we do, particularly if we're struggling a little bit with someone who maybe is losing volume or losing blood until we get blood up from the blood bank. Note that blood is also a colloid. Now, I have a few just remaining solutions that I wanted to show you that you may come across. This is mannitol with both 10 and 20% here, 500 ml bag um, and a 500 ml polyfuser bottle. 
So here's our contents here. Osmolarity, so it's very high baritonic solution, 10 and of course the 20% then. So both of them can be irritant to the blood. It contains 50 grams of mannitol here in this 500 ml bag, and then it will contain twice that amount because it's 20% in our 500 ml polyfuser bottle. These are used as hypertonic solutions. We give them to head injuries sometimes um, as part of the management to try and keep um, intracranial pressure down. Um, so this is what they look like. You just need to be careful with giving them because they do have other effects including quite strong diuretic effects afterwards because they are um, uh, osmotic diuretics. It's of large sugar that presents in the urine and pulls a lot of fluid out with it. But you may see it being used in the emergency department or in ICU for head injuries. That's pretty much largely what we use them for. Over here, these have some solutions that are mixed with other electrolytes. So in this one, we've potassium chloride and glucose 5%. So this is largely for when we want to get more potassium into the hypokalemic patient. And our contents are here. So there's 20 millimoles of potassium here and 20 millimoles of chloride. You can get these in 40 millimole bags. It's in red because potassium is a very dangerous ion um, or electrolyte. And you need to be very careful about what you're giving. So these are more clearly labelled than the rest of them with just black writing on them. Always be careful with potassium. Potassium also comes in very small 10 mil vials that we make up in the more, in the high critical care areas. So, um, but they're dangerous drugs and we have to be careful with them. So this is similar, but this is sodium chloride and glucose and contains potassium chloride 0.3%. So if we look at this here, it contains 20 millimoles of potassium, but more chloride because of the sodium chloride in it. And it has glucose just like the other solution. So again, this will be for replacing potassium largely. The reason everything else is in it is um, they're at slightly lower levels. So it's 0.45% sodium chloride because we don't want it to be too hypertonic. It is still hypertonic because it's glucose in it, but we don't want it to be excessive. And then finally, the last one I want you to, sh to show you is sodium bicarbonate or soda bic as you may hear it being called colloquially. This is 8.4% weight per volume. This is a 100 ml bottle and it contains 100 millimoles of sodium and 100 millimoles of bicarbonate. Theoretical osmolarity 2000. So I'm sure you can tell from that it will be very irritant to veins. So ideally it is given through a large vein or most ideally through some sort of central venous access. This is again not something that you're going to be given without um, consultation with someone senior down on the wards but this is what soda bit looks like it's a very alkaline solution and we give it to so i see the ph there for its alkalinity seven to eight point five we do occasionally give it to tide us over in someone who is very acidemic and maybe is heading towards dialysis or has another problem with a metabolic acidosis and um, quite severe ph deteriorations this will uh, not solve your problem it will temporarily make your ph a little bit better and uh, hopefully tide your patient over until you treat the underlying problem so there are all the fluids i have to tell you about today and a lot of them you won't see quite regularly you might see the jello on the ward for um, a hypovolemic patient if they're a bit hypotensive they'll give jello that might last a little longer than the crystalloids and then the rest of the time you're going to largely be dealing with probably sodium chlorides or maybe Hartman solutions. Um, we will discuss all this in our tutorial, our little video tutorial, and I will discuss a little bit about blood transfusion as well. That's all for now, guys. Any questions, please send me uh, an email and I will do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you.